Hello, everyone. This is David Solomon with uh, CoBuzz. I'm glad you were able to join us. We have got an incredibly cool show for you guys today. We've got the uh, the team from Audio Research. Uh, Trent Scruggs is here, who has just purchased the company, along with Dave Gordon, their managing director, and Brandon um, Lauer, who's going to be their international. He'll be international sales and uh, and marketing. So this is a really, really cool show because, um, you know, so many things have transpired in this company lately. So we're going to get the whole scoop from Trent and the gang and, uh, and, and, and see what they have to see what they have to say. Uh, before we do that, a little bit about CoBuzz. We've got over 60 million tracks. Uh, we do actually have a download store as well. So if you're the kind of person who likes to own your own music, or even the kind of person that just likes to support the artists that are that are your favorites. Uh, go to the download down the download store. You don't even have to be a member, and you will not believe the pricing that we've got on uh, high res downloads as well as uh, standard sixteen bit stuff. We we do feature tracks up to twenty four uh, one ninety two in flax. Almost any um, DAC will play them back. Uh, no need to hop through any hoops. Um, We've also got a, uh, our programs are, are priced at $15 per month. If you're an individual or if you're a family, um, you can, uh, you can get in uh, six people for about uh, $25 a month uh, or $12.50 if you uh, pay annually. Um, our, our, that's our family plan. And then probably the coolest feature that we don't talk as much about as we should is our partner playlist. These are some of the coolest playlists that we've got on CoBuzz. And uh, pretty soon, I'd say within a day or so, uh, we'll have a brand new audio research playlist up there for you. So, uh, hey, thanks for joining. And um, at this point, I'm going to uh, bring on our feature guest, the new president and owner of audio research, Trent, Trent Suggs. Trent. <laughs> How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you, sir? Good to have you on. Well, thank you so much for the invite. Uh, no problem. As soon as I heard the, the first thing I did when I when I saw the news, because uh, you guys, I mean, you and I talk fairly frequently, but I'm just guessing you were like so busy. We didn't have time to discuss this. So when I saw the news uh, about Trent Suggs buying audio research, I got to tell you, man, it totally <laughs> floored me. I, I started laughing. So, man, what's going on? How did this all come about? Can you, in fact, I wanted, I definitely want to get some of your history going on here, but I don't want to do that right now. I, right now, I want to go, Trent, how the heck did you pull this off? This is so cool. So, I started laughing as well. <laughs> um. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to throw out, you know, Jeff Pogey uh, reached out to me. Uh, we've been in negotiation for about six months. And Jeff Pogey is who? Uh, the CEO of the Macintosh Group. Right. Um, so he reached out to me and uh, there was some chatter back when I used to be at Audio Research um, that I was super passionate about the brand. Um, and somehow, way, shape or form, he got the buzz and he contacted me and said, hey, what would you be interested in buying audio research? Um, of course, you know, uh, it, it's, it's my brand. Uh, it, it's what I was, I have always been passionate about. I mean, I love the people, I love the brand. Um, so we just kind of fought through, I shouldn't say fought through, negotiated uh, for about six months and we come to what we have today. Um, so, Super fortunate. Uh, I am so blessed by so many aspects of my life to be in this position. That's really cool, man. I'm so proud of you as an old time, as a longtime friend. I'm super, super happy for you. But as a big fan of audio research in general, um, this to me is a, a really exciting um, time for the company because it was so obvious your passion when you worked for the company and you were just an employee. It was like you owned the company then or, 
you know, you were the, like the best kind of employee to possibly have because you were not only a, an employee, you were, you were a total ambassador for the line. Right. So how did you even get the experience to say, do something like this? I'd, I'd really kind of like to know a little bit about, you know, where you came from. A lot of people are, are not like me. They don't know you uh, really, really well. Cool. So tell, tell, tell Absolutely. Them. Who is Trent Suggs, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, born and raised in North Carolina, um, started a company right out of college. Um, and then, you know, 20 years into that almost, um, Bill Pugh, uh, who is, uh, I guess, the sales director or one of the sales directors for Wilson Audio, he and I became friends for almost, I don't know, 15, 16 years. Um, he asked me to come work for Samico because there was an opportunity in the Southeast. So I sold my company, I sold the real estate, and I just started working for Samico. Very successful there in the Southeast with a great bunch of partners, dealer network, were just amazing people. Um, and then I had an opportunity, and, and at that point in time, I was a regional, right? Um, and so I had an opportunity to be, become a national sales director for another company. Um, I was there and once you get the taste of kind of that empowerment, uh, if you will, and really creating relationships, it, it grows on you. So from there, um, Audio Research called and I went to work for Audio Research, I think it was in 2015. Um, and then we parted ways in 2017, but my passion for the company never, never wavered, right? It was just is what it was. Um, so when the opportunity arose for me to have an opportunity to buy the company, I was all in. So I spoke with my wife, my kids, my family members, and they knew how passionate I was uh, and am about the brand. So just pulled it off and made it happen. So tell me, Trent, are, I, I know you, uh, you, you've you got a place now in Minnesota, very close to the uh, the headquarters of, of ARC uh, Audio, Audio Research. Um, are you guys going to move up? Or are, you, are you staying down or what? No, we're grounded. Um, I have three kids in college, right, in North and South Carolina. And my beautiful wife, Wendy, um, she is the, you know, she's the soul of the, of the family. So she's grounded in North Carolina. So we'll keep the house there and my mother's there, her mother-in-law, my, my dad, mom, everybody's in North Carolina. So it makes no sense for them to relocate because we're so grounded there. Um, but I really felt that for me to do the proper job for audio research, I had to be here, right? And so I just leased a little townhouse, um, very comfortable, very quiet, because I'm a quiet guy. Uh, most people that know me, I'm quiet, but I'm also a bit um, demonstrative in, in in the same sentence. I expect a lot from people, but um, you know, it's 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 just it's a great maneuver. Um, you know, people always ask me, "How are you going to deal with this cold weather in Minnesota?" Well, I live in the mountains of North Carolina. It's cold there. It's not like Atlanta where you live, Mr. Solomon. Well, you were up in like you were like in Boone. That's correct. That that's pretty, that's pretty high up anyway for the East coast. That's correct. Correct. Yeah. So, I got, I got lost in Boone once and it was the scariest thing that ever happened. It was before cell phones and it's not a place you want to get <laughs> lost. I think I was going from, uh, do you remember now audio video in, um, in Greensboro in Greensboro? So somehow I, instead of going all the way down and cutting back up through the mountains, um, uh, uh, I, I went across and I remember it was through Boone and I ended up getting so lost. It was so dark. It was raining so hard. I couldn't That's see correct. one single sign. Yep. And finally I ended up getting to this place with these guys that it would, they scared me, <laughs> but I finally ended up getting out of this whole thing. But man, what a beautiful place that is. But no, it's gorgeous. And it's so safe. Um, you know, frankly, I, yeah, I cause nobody can get there. this or not, but you know, I don't even have keys to my house. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just one of those places um, where, you know, you feel safe and, and it, it's very 
kind of back country, but people are so super nice and very respectful. Um, so, you know, I, I should say I, I'm going to miss that, but really here in, many, in Minneapolis, and especially in Maple Grove, Plymouth area where I'm living, people are so nice. Uh, it's really a Southern type of mentality where people just care about things, right? Um, which I embrace completely. Oh, that's awesome, man. Listen, uh, from Cobuzz to you, from me to my dear friend, uh, congratulations, man. You, you got so many people that are that are sitting back going, man, what are these guys going to do? Yeah. So one of the things that I thought was really interesting was you kind of put the band back together when, That's right. when audio research was really cooking. Um, there were two people that were by your side that uh, that, you know, did equally as good a job. Absolutely. Um, and, and maybe better, Frank. I'm sorry. And maybe well, it, it's like our team. It's like we've got kind of a small team, and right. we all support each other. The things that Dan doesn't do, I do. The things that I don't do, Neetha does. The things that Neetha doesn't do, Sujan does. I mean, it's it. It just it just it's a it's a a supportive role. Um, so I saw you guys all doing super, super important things, really supporting each other and supporting the brand. And that's what I'm looking for now. I'd, I'd kind of like to bring those guys on on uh, on screen. What do you think? Absolutely. Uh, and I must say, it's a really symbiotic uh, relationship. And without these two guys, I wouldn't have purchased the company. I, I must say that. Let's welcome, uh, let's welcome Managing Director Dave Gordon, Gordon. International sales manager and marketing guru, <laughs> and my friend for so many years, Mr. Brandon Lauer. How are you guys doing? All the way back to those now audio video days, man. Oh man! In fact, I would, I didn't even think about that, but that was actually one of the trips that yeah. that you were still working with now at that point. When I first met Brandon, he was working for Ann and Richard Shackman in North Carolina. And I absolutely fell in love with this guy because he was so articulate at everything that he did. Of course, he was a top performer at the at uh, Now Audio Video because he he was just so thorough at everything that he did. At everything that he did, he he just brought this real caring attitude toward uh, Brandon. It is so good to see you, my friend. It's great to be here, Dave. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us. You almost didn't make it. You were you were in. Uh, you were in Mexico for a little while and kind of got stuck, didn't you? A lot of while. <laughs> sure did. Yeah, yeah. Two months turned into six and a half, you know, with the onset of COVID and and just a comedy of of comedy of issues. I mean, I, I say that there could be a lot worse places than being stuck where it's, you know, 80 degrees and you're on the ocean. But but uh, but indeed, that's what happened, you know, and I got quarantined there and and uh, like 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 full on quarantine, like you you one person per car. They were arresting people that were driving long distance, crazy things like wow, that. Wow, really? You know, it was like, you just don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I was thinking like when COVID-20 hits, I want to I want to call you and go, yeah. hey, friend, <laughs> you know, where are we going? Because <laughs> I was just stuck in my place in Atlanta, right? We were all just stuck. <laughs> well, Brandon uh, was the uh, marketing manager for uh, audio research um uh, back when they were really cooking and left for a little while to go to Shinyata Research. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he did a great job for those guys. And then I'm guessing when uh, when Trent was pulling the band back together, he he called you. And, and you know, what what did he say? It's like <laughs> I never forget the phone call. I was I was in I was in Mexico. I was actually on my way to get my hair cut. Um, this is when we still could get haircuts and, uh, <laughs> and trend calls. Right. And, um, you know, we're just talking kind of, you know, just, just chatting about stuff. And he's like, would you ever think about going back to audio research? And I'm like, what? I think about it. <laughs> I think about it. There'd have to be a few, you know, there'd have to be a few criteria that, that were met in order for me to do that. But, uh, yeah, you know, and, and that was it. Like, really, that was the only thing that he brought up. No other questions, no other discussion really about it. You know, so just that little seed was planted right there. And um, and then about, oh, gosh, what was it, May or something, I guess is when 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 he called me. 
and then kind of revealed the big plan. And uh, yeah, you know, and, and it didn't take long, you know, I mean, Trent and I, you know, he's, he mentioned the word symbiotic and Trent and I, we have, we have a really complementary set of skills, much in, much in the sense of, of uh, you know, we mirror each other. Um, you know, his strengths are my weaknesses and vice versa. And um, so, you know, we, we, I mean, it's kind of crazy. We finish each other's sentences a lot of times. We come to the same conclusions. Um, so we make a great pair. And uh, so, you know, it, was, it didn't take long of him talking and, and really kind of explaining what his goals and, and design was for the company to, to know that this, this was my next move. This was my next step. And the fact that we have Dave here still, you know, Dave is our Dave's our balancer, right? So so Trent and I get these crazy harebrained ideas, and Dave's the one that's like comes down and, and 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 puts it into the real world perspective and says, okay, let's let's look at this from another another light. Um, so no, we 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 make an amazing uh, amazing threesome, and I I really don't think I could be much happier right now in, in a job. I'm 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 just I'm so thankful to be here and to be working with these guys. So. Well, I'm I'm thrilled. Uh, obviously, we've already had some very fun conversations, uh, kind of starting, you know, very non-professional. Like, what the heck is? <laughs> what are you kidding me? <laughs> Just some really fun conversations with that. And thank you for bringing up Dave Gordon because I was leaving the best for last. <laughs> Dave was the uh, <laughs> Dave was the only one that didn't defect. He was the only one that. St- stuck around and when i think when anyone thinks of audio research honestly the first thing they think of is is dave gordon uh dave uh embodies audio research he always has Uh, i'm proud to know him as another good friend that we've known each other a long time and dave's presentations are something you just don't want to miss if you if you ever get into minnesota and get the rare privilege of taking the audio research tour or if you are ever at a show that dave is at he's always just so full of incredible information in fact i took a i took a trip to minnesota uh pre-covid i think it was last summer right dave yeah that's right and dave gave us the i mean some people will give you the nickel tour uh dave gave us the uh, okay put on your gloves and your mask you're going to work tour it was <laughs> it was so uh, in depth and we got such a wonderful history um, of audio research and just what made the company. And even at that point, Dave, you were talking about family. You were talking about um, the fun that you guys had uh, together and, and just the atmosphere that um, that uh, audio research brings to their employees. T- tell, us a, tell us a little bit about you, buddy, and, and, and what you've been up to and, and what you think about this new, uh, this new venture. Oh, uh, this is the best thing that could happen to the company. Um, can you still see me? Because I think yeah. I lost you. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, no, I mean, I started with audio research in 89 originally. So I, I'm an old timer here, obviously. And uh, hell, everybody starts here as a kid. And uh, But no, this is a really special company because we really do everything the same way now that we did when I joined the company and uh, you know, the, the key is that, you know, Bill Johnston, our founder sold the company in 2008, which he was like 81 and we were relieved. So, um, you know, the thing is you don't realize how much, you know, what uh, a private equity group really will do. And uh, fortunately they, they, when they bought us, they honored us and they invested in the company. They really helped us a lot. And, um, you know, it's been good, but everything becomes a little more decentralized over time. And, uh, you know, Bill was very adamant when he sold the company that nothing will change. And uh, and that's really easy to say when you're when you want to sell the company, then the buyer can do whatever they want with it. And uh, but the mission didn't change. We kept all the core, all the core people, the key people. Actually, no one left. When we were sold, and uh, and that was why we just kept going. And uh, we had some external influences, and that we had some other people trying to help us and make us more efficient. And you saw for yourself when you came through. It's like we do things, you know, in the, in the most costly way possible. 
<laughs> it, it really is amazing. It's like, you know, when you have people asking, why are you using, you know, that output connector? Why are you using that power cord? Even a molded cord, things like that. We still manufacture everything from the ground up. We had people who said, you know, you really should do a wave soldering machine. And that will really save you a lot of money. And the problem was that it didn't sound very good. We bought a $100,000 wave soldering machine and we didn't use it. That was a kind of a waste of money. And, uh, you know, after a while they said, look, you are who you are. The DNA is what it is. And, uh, you know, and if they changed us, if anyone tried to change us, at least dramatically, you know, we would lose everything. You know, we were, we're a mature company and we had, a, we have a lot of loyal owners out there. God bless them. And uh, I see them every show. And, uh, you know, it's great to get, get, to get together with these guys. And, uh, but, you know, like when you came through, the best part of the tour was I just showed you everything we do. It's people don't realize, they think that all the high end companies are kind of the same, you know, and so most of them, they have really good design and, uh, and they have other people make a lot of stuff for them and they are kind of an assembly company and they kind of put the parts together. I mean, we, have all the boards made for us. We can install every component, every board. We hand solder. Um, we build everything from the ground up and you have to see that process. It's just so fanatical, the way we, uh, the way we burn in tubes, the way we measure tubes, the way we, we you know, burn in and measure every FET that we use. And uh, so we're trying to keep a very small sonic window. And then we have one person who still listens to every piece. And, uh, you know, he's an insane individual. But, uh, I mean, you have to be uh, to be able to listen to everything, every new piece, every service piece. Um, well, look, I mean, this stuff is not cheap. I mean, yeah. what, what, I don't, nobody's ever, uh, that's, it's not what you would call a budget company. Yeah. So everything really does need to be right. And that might, that may sound like a little bit of a commercial, but I'd like to bring up a few systems that you sure. guys are, are featured in. I mean, if you take a look at some of the awesome systems throughout history that um, that audio research has been featured in, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, every single time that I go to a, a Music Matters event, uh, the audio research is always sh they're always the the center point of of the uh, of the show. Uh, Dan, you can go ahead and go to a few of the other ones, please. I, I pulled up a few of these because I just wanted to know people uh, who you were. This was one of my favorite systems. I believe this was at Rocky Mountain. Rocky Rocky Mountain. Mountain. Right. Rocky Mountain about three years ago with the big right. uh, Martin Logans. And these were uh, a couple of your new amps at that point. Uh, I can't remember how much power they were. 750 watts. That system absolutely floored me. I kept coming in and... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, kept coming in, kept coming back, and it was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, here's another one, uh, another big Wilson system. I'm not sure where this is. I, I never saw this, but it was grand, and we were in uh, West Palm. Wow, what a what an incredible system! Um, I don't know if there are any more. But, for the people, uh, for the people that that don't really know audio research and the clout they hold in the industry, they are uh, they are. Um, you can go ahead and take that away if you want to, Dan. They're uh, among the most respected, if not the most respected, tube brand in all of audio. So wow, what a, a legacy you guys have got to to live up to, huh? <laughs> no, it, it's great. And, you know, you know, Trent always talked about, he said, I'd love to buy Audi Research one day. And I'm like, yeah, OK, love to have you buy Audi Research. But, you know, we were owned by a group. And uh, and, you know, the question was, what would he ever ever be able to uh, to uh, wrestle us away? And it was it was perfect timing because Mac Group treated us really wonderfully. And uh, and they were great to work with. And now with their. Uh, move to automotive and with for Macintosh and Sonus Faber, things like that. It's the perfect time for us to be independent. So it's been 12 years. So it's kind of back to the future for us. And, uh, you know, we're really, really happy. And, uh, and you know, look, I was at Audio Research when, when Brennan came on, he's like a brother. Uh, Trent, uh, Trent and I, 
uh, were roomies in, at a couple of events, and <laughs> we were. Really nice. But no, it, it's it's been great, and uh, and you know we gave an interview a few weeks ago, and it was like the three of us have never left. Uh, right. We were, all, we were we were finishing each other's sentences, and that's all you could ever ask for. And uh, we just want everyone to understand how much we care about them. Um, we care about our customers. There were always people a little suspicious when you're owned by anyone else. And, um, you know, so Bill Johnson passed away and this is, this is the new blood. This is the new breed. And, uh, and we are independent, baby. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about future plans with, uh, with audio research, see what you guys have got go and see what you're up to, see what audio research is going to look like. And, uh, six months and a year and, and, and in five years. So, but right now, before we do that, um, we're going to bring on, uh, we're going to bring on our uh, Sujan Hong. Uh, Sujan is not here. Dan Matt has actually taken her place this week. Um, and Dan is good, but he's just no Sujan. So you guys all, you know, like give him a big round of applause or, or whatever. But uh, Dan, Dan Matka, uh, why don't you join us, buddy? How you doing? Good, good. Dan, I'm good. I guess Dan my is as producer because I've been behind the scenes here. Yeah, Dan is our uh, Dan. If you don't know uh, out there in uh, in the live stream land, Dan uh, Matka is our managing director, uh, also a good friend, and he's producing the show today. But right now, Dan barely, is gonna, barely. <laughs> right now, Dan is going to come on screen. He's going to. He's going to tell you a little bit about the, some of the new releases that we've got coming up tomorrow. And as soon as he finishes that, uh, me, Trent, Brandon, and Dave will uh, come back on and 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 um, and start the show again or finish out the show. Thanks, Dan. Oh, no problem. I mean, I've really uh, uh, got almost you know nothing to say compared to Sue Jan's usual weekly. Um, uh, uh, lesson, if you will, but we did pick a couple of the new releases. If you're a Koba subscriber, you know, every week, uh, every Friday, uh, Friday is when, when new releases come out in, in 2020, uh, we feature several dozen of the new albums that come out that day in all of our top genres. And those albums are handpicked, hand selected out of, you, you know, maybe you don't realize, but there's something like you know, well, on a track level, 40,000 tracks released a week that show up on streaming services, 40,000. So if you've got uh, at least several thousand albums being released every single week, uh, Sujan and, and the Code Buzz editorial team do a great job of boiling that down into the stuff you really will want to check out if you're really into music and, uh, and into sound quality. So we picked a couple of the things that are coming out this week. Flaming Lips, great American alternative rock band from Norman, Oklahoma. New album. It's available in high res. Definitely want to check that out tomorrow. Uh, a favorite of mine, Chick Corea. This looks to be a great album. Also coming out in high res with, um, you know, got Mozart, Chopin, and Monk, Gershwin, Wonder. Uh, I can't wait to hear this. I don't know what's what it's going to be like. Mastodon, a great hard rock metal band. Not sure what medium rarities means. I guess that these are tracks that are somewhat rare, but you'll be happy to be listening to them uh, with the volume turned up in 24-bit uh, audio. Another hard rocker, Marilyn Manson. Uh, we know he's got a lot of fans among our, our listeners. His new album, We Are Chaos out in 2448 ought to be a great listen with some cool cool sonics and uh, this one this band blitz and trapper i just always thought their name was really ridiculous like i always wanted to call them blitz and trips or something or blapper trapper and then they've got this name holy smokes future jokes for their album and uh it's, it's indie rock but the name makes me laugh oh we've actually got uh uh one more slide. Ay, ay, ay. I'm cl cl clearly nothing like uh, uh, Sujan because I don't know what I'm doing at all. Uh, a great uh, uh, indie label 
Compass Records. They've got tons of really cool artists, including Amy Ray, Colin Hay. Uh, actually, we just completed our deal with them and, and getting their entire catalog backfilled. And we'll have all of their new releases this week going forward. We're really excited about that. It's a great label. So look for that one, Compass Records. Of course, if you know Cobas, you know that you can um, search by label. Very important to us being able to drill down and see what the labels that release the music you're interested in are doing. And uh, people seem to dig that. So we'll keep on doing it. Check those albums out tomorrow and, and everything else. I did my best. I hey, did my you, best. Did, you did a great job, man. Hey. Uh, you may not know it, but every Wednesday evening, Dan hosts a um, a, a live show. He he plays music that uh, a good portion of you have never heard. Dan is a real music lover, and the guy's uh, album collection is is just unbelievable. Um, lately, since COVID, he hasn't it. been doing. It. Yeah, there you go. That's a little. That's a few of them. Uh, lately, since uh, since the pandemic has happened, Dan has been unable to get to the studio and actually spin real vinyl. So he's been using Cobus to um, to do, to do his DJ show. But you guys should all all tune in. Um, Dan, it's actually, it's actually every other Wednesday, so it's twice a month. Uh, MakerParkRadio.nyc. Actually, I've been able to get back into the studio now with a COVID protocol, so I'm playing records again and. Uh, yeah. It's makerparkradio.nyc, and it'll be uh, next Wednesday, uh, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. So that's fun, but it's freeform radio. It's not high-quality audio. I mean, it's a regular internet radio station, so it's going to sound a little lossy, as you know. But I don't I know, man. It's, it's a great show. You know, the, the last time I, I actually got to tune in, you were playing this, this, uh, this thing, and I'm thinking – God, it's so familiar, yet it's it's so unfamiliar. And uh, I'm going, who is that? I, and and you wrote back, uh, thank you very much for taking your time uh, from your DJ. And you wrote back, it's Funkadelics. I'm going, yeah. How did I miss this one? And, and and you wrote back, it's it's on Cobus Toys, I think it was, right? Yeah, yeah. But and so I like got turned on this whole. It, so at any rate, if you're into getting turned on to new music that may be a little eclectic, please tune in and, and see Dan. And uh, I think you'll in, enjoy it a lot. Dan, thanks uh, for being here. And thanks so much for producing today. Thanks for uh, letting me come on camera and ruin your show. Let's uh, let's bring our boys back and uh, see what uh, see what they've got, what kind of plans that they've got. Hey, Brandon. Hey, looks like Trent uh, took a little break, huh? <laughs> that's okay because we can talk about them right now it's going to be like your only time so if anybody's got any grievances now <laughs> now's the time to pull up the trent grievances because you know he probably won't see this probably <laughs> <laughs> so so brandon let's let's start with you on this um i noticed uh, a huge difference when you left with the marketing with audio with audio research so you know what do you what do you have planned what's uh, what's going on this has got to be a very challenging time for you since there are no shows and so what what are you what are you going to be doing well you know i mean i think uh the first the first key in marketing obviously is communication right and so we, we typically think of marketing as advertising and you know and 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 creating some body of work to to advertise our products. Um, but, you know, at the same time, uh, a phone call is, is marketing effectively, right? I mean, every time we, we, we touch somebody, um, you know, we're communicating. And so I think I bring that up because I think one of the, one of the first goals, you know, that, that all of us are on the same page with is, is that level of communication. So really reaching out and touching our dealers, our distributors, our customers, you know, and end, end users and, and, uh, you know, and just being a more communicative brand, um, being more open about who we are and, and really the, the directions that we're wanting to take, our goals. So, yeah, I think that's, that's number one, you know, and, and it is a little challenging, right? Because we're not, we're not traveling right now. You know, everybody's at home due to COVID. And, and uh, so it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's becoming creative, more Zoom phone calls, right? You know, just uh, spending more time reaching out. But on top of that, um, 
you know, we've already discussed, we want to do a series of, of short videos, you know, in, in the first section we're talking about, and Dave was talking specifically about, you know, our process here and, and what it takes to build an audio research component. You know, it's, it is incredibly hand, you know, hand, hand intensive, There's a lot of craftsmanship involved there. And, um, you know, people don't quite realize the level. I mean, you've seen it, so it, to you it makes sense. But I don't think people realize that, you know, some people, uh, some of our, our, our employees are, you know, they'll sit and they'll work for two hours on a board, you know, or three hours. Something that a wave soldering machine does in ostensibly a minute and a half, right? So it, it's a it's a completely different process. And we want to try to convey that message. More clearly and better. I don't think I don't think that's really been been explained as well as it could. You know, another one is Dave was talking about every product gets listened to here. So, you know, Warren, who, who you met, so Warren Gale is our our sonic designer, and Warren not only listens to every single production product, so every one, not every second one or every third one, everything we build goes through his sound room, but he helped to design that product in, in, in its early stages. So he actually knows what everything should sound like. So Dave was talking about our tolerances being really small. Those get even smaller when you've got the designer listening to every single product, because if it doesn't sound right, it gets pulled and it goes right back into, into our QA department. So. So again, we're going to use, you know, try to use some videos to to explain a little bit more about our company and our culture and who we are, and uh, you know, and we just really want to connect with people. We want people connecting with people. So, um, of course, it's it's about the products, it's about the music and the end result, but we want to also show who it is behind the scenes that's making these things. So, like I say, you'll see a video with Warren coming out. You know, you'll probably end up seeing some people from our engineering or our production department. And, and again, just really, really trying to enrich that story about, about this 50-year-old company that, you know, despite all odds, despite starting building tubes when nobody else was making tube products, right? You know, and, and uh, despite making everything by hand, uh, here we are, you know, and... Um, and yeah, I think a lot of people can really appreciate that process, though, uh, Brandon. It's like, you know, it, it it goes to the adage, they don't make them like they used to. Yeah. Some do, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I think that video that you guys are thinking about doing or, or, or in process of putting together is going to be really, really interesting. I won't be quite so exclusive at that point. You know, I kind of enjoy my exclusivity. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, oh, I got to take the tour of the audio research uh, uh, corporation uh, with Dave Gordon. So now <laughs> what you're basically saying is everybody's going to be able to take the the tour with Dave Gordon. Is that right? So you guys have got to come up with something that's going to bring back my exclusivity. I need to get back on the cool kids table. <laughs> well, they, tell you, they don't get to meet Warren unless they come here. Hey, it was really nice meeting him. What a fascinating guy. I can't, I'm really looking forward to this video. I'll bet it's going to be really, really uh, uh, informative and, you know, kind of teach people what I now know about your corporation. So good luck with that. Thanks. Yeah. You know, the, we just really want to focus on, you know, it's, it's all about the music, right? You know, at the end of the day, it's about, it's about whatever it's, if it's streaming, you know, if it's an LP, if it's a CD, it's about, about taking that and making music. I uh, just a little side story. I, I went to a master class once conducted by Yo Yo Ma, and uh, he had a 50, like a 15 year old student playing for him. And after the student played, he he walked over and grabbed their sheet of paper and he said, "You know, this is the worst representation of music you could possibly have. It's a bunch of lines and black dots on a sheet of paper." And then he looks at the student and he said. It's your job to make this live every time you perform it. You know, and, and that really stuck with me because that's our job. Our job is to make music alive every time people sit down. We want them to get goosebumps. We want them to forget that there's a big stereo in front of them and get sucked into that experience. And yeah. uh, that is really what audio research is about. 
That is a beautiful explanation and really looking forward to seeing what you come up with then. I'd like to come back to you in just a little bit sure. because you're not only the uh, marketing uh, director for audio research, you're also the international sales manager. You are really quite a multi-talented and multifaceted guy um, <laughs> and uh, amazing to me. Uh, when Brandon goes uh, to Germany, he doesn't speak English. Everybody speaks English in Germany, but Brent, uh, Brandon goes, you know, full on German. It, he's he's amazing like that. But we'll come back to you in a little bit, uh, uh, Brandon. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the marketing explanation. And I'm sure over the next few months and years, that'll that'll really solidify especially with what all's going on and and the challenges that you happen to face as a marketer right now so best of luck to you and sure. really glad to have you back in the band <laughs> so trent buddy what do you got going what's so what are your give me like you know what's first three months what's uh first year and and first two or three years looking like for you i'm i'm sure like on your journeys from boone to Minnesota, you've had a lot of time to get a lot of quality thinking done. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, the um, the task is not undaunting, um, but it's giant, right? Um, you know, the goal for this company and my coworkers, um, and, and really there's no hierarchy in this company, period. You know, I, I was very hesitant to even na name myself president or CEO or whatever you want to call it. That's just not about me. Um, we have a giant task to do to bring audio research back into the limelight um, during Bill Johnson's age. Uh, that's really the goal of, of, of my goal, right? So, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, first three months, uh, organize, change some protocols, um, and really just connect with our dealer base um, and our end users. Uh, yeah, if you don't know about the audio research dealer base, if you look up like the best gear that you could possibly find on planet Earth, um, check out those dealers. They're going to have audio research. That's correct. So we are very fortunate to be in the class A uh, brand of gear. Um, and really, we're not concerned with the class B and C. So what we need to do as a company is cater to those dealerships and our customers. I do realize that there's been a little bit of a lack of, um, you know, human contact with audio research. Um, that's going to change. We are just down home people. We wear button ups and we are willing to roll our sleeves up and do whatever is necessary to make it right. Does that make sense, Dave? It makes sense, uh, uh, Trent, and and really goes along with one of our conversations a few weeks ago when you were when you were talking about, um, you know, I, I want this to be a family again. Yeah. And I want everybody to make sure they understand their roots. So uh, it's, it's, that's a beautiful goal. It's, it's, uh, it's exactly what you need to be doing. And, um, and I think you've got the team put together that you're going to actually be able to pull that off in a really, uh, in a really big way. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, again, that was the goal. So without Brandon and Dave, um, you know, I would be throwing darts at a board that's, you know, 10 feet wide, 10 feet tall. So, you know, we together as a team, you know, we constantly narrow that that board down um, and hit the target. So, you know, for our existing customers or potential new customers, we're on your side. We get it. You know, we're, we're just all humans. There's no stigma. You know, this, uh, I don't know, audio mafia, if you will. Uh, that's not what we're about. We want to have fun. We want to produce the very best products at the appropriate price points for every single individual in America. Right. So, you know, that's kind of a, a little bit of a synopsis about, about who we are, what we want to do and what we're you know, striving to uh, create. 
A uh, question just popped up, and I, and it, it's a very interesting and fair question. It's like, you know, how do we uh, how do we audition uh, the audio research gear during this pandemic? I know some of some stores are actually open now, right, uh, for appointment. But but uh, what what do you guys say when people ask you that? I'd say most dealers are open by if by appointment and just. Mm-hmm. You know that, and that's really the best way to listen. Anyway, when I was, right. in, you, know, you know, people would come in on a really busy day, and and they didn't want to hear this and hear that, and you're trying to keep, you know, five or six customers happy at the same time um, on a slow day, maybe two or three. But I just tell them, look, why don't you make a, you know, just let us know what you want to listen to in advance. We can set it up for you. It's like making a reservation for dinner. And it's the same thing these days. It's no different. These guys can customize the system according to your needs. But they need to, you need to talk to them. You need to talk to the dealer and say, this is what I'm looking for. And, you know, have a conversation. This is what I own now. This is what I want to get. This is the direction I want to go. And they'll make sure it's all right for you. But the key is we have retailers because we can't take care of you long distance. Yeah, yeah. You can get to a dealer. Man, you're blessed. Well, you know, the thing is, though, that the dealers, though, the very best dealers in the world want audio research on their floor because it makes stuff sound like only audio research can 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 sound. So right. you'll you'll walk into a dealer and frequently you'll see these things paired up with Magico or Wilson or Sonus or literally the best speakers that a dealer has to offer. The ARC system is almost always going to be on that system. Um so, you know, that should that's a great going back to marketing. You can't get better marketing than that. That's the best third party authority you can get. The dealers do want their stuff to sound as good as they can possibly sound. And so many of them, when you go, OK, what's the very best sound that I can get? They'll pull up ARC. In fact, you're going to have a uh, uh, I just noticed yesterday and I'll be attending to I'll be watching that Trent's going to be on with a really good friend of mine tomorrow down here in Atlanta, uh, Alan Jones at High Five Eyes. Like when you go to Alan's place, you better believe that is going to have some Vandersteens or Wilsons or, you know, some of his better stuff on there. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, to the live stream tomorrow as well. And I'm telling yeah. you, I am digging getting the whole scoop on this thing, though. <laughs> Well, it's been, you know, the, you you guys showed some photos too right before the before you talked about the new releases, and you know those photos kind of speak volumes as well because people do tend to pair audio research with their with their top gear in in the shop, and that's simply because audio research allows all the rest of those components to really do their job. It 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 gets out of the way as much as possible while delivering that musicality. So. It, it uh, you know quite simply it's complementary you know it creates a complementary synergistic system and it works with a lot of different products we make sure of that as well you know that very our- much very much agree with that so really I think the answer to Neil's question was just give your local folks a, a, a shout most likely this is the best time you could ever listen to audio research ever anyway. Uh, because just like Dave said, there's probably not going to be six or eight or 10 people in the store. Most all of these guys are super, super respectful of your health and what's going on. Uh, so they'll make you uh, an appointment just just by yourselves. I know um, people like uh, Alan Jones at uh, High Five Buys or uh, Sean up at uh, Definitive. I mean, there's so many great so dealers many. you guys have got. Um, I'm not going to sit here and try to mention them all, but... The ones that I know of uh, at this point, you'll you'll most likely be able to to give them a call and um, and and just go, hey, what are you guys doing this afternoon? Here's the thing about the the dealers like this, yeah, they love music just as much as you do. Correct. So it, you know, you get into a dealer like this, and then most likely they're going to be with you, going, hey, you know, let's listen to this or let's listen to this. But any of these guys are, if you want to be by yourself, just let us know, and we'll will let you play around. So really right now is probably one of the best times that you could ever go out and, and audition audio research to be assured that you're going to be pretty much by yourself and, and, and you can really do what you need to do with the system. And what, what better time 
get a, a, improve your audio system than than when you're spending more time at home, right? You know, right. So, so Dave, um, one one uh, point that I want to stress is that you know we are limited distribution, and that is for a reason in North America. Um, we only partner ourselves with the best of the best, right? Um, and we do that for a reason. The dealer network is the class A dealers. They take care of customers. Um, they are cordial. They will respect your desires. That's the only way that we would offer our products for these retailers to offer our product. If they don't abide by our rules and, um, you know, if they're not that type of partner, then they're just not our partner. Yeah, hey, that makes that that makes all the sense of the world. I am uh, right now putting a link uh, in the comments to your website. So if anybody wants to go there and just check out audioresearch.com, um, you'll be able to see all of the awesome stuff. Um, I apologize that we didn't really have time to talk about, you know, real specific product and getting into the technology and all of the things that really make audio research uh, such a cool company and uh, a company that um, has really not just survived, but thrived. Um, you go by and go, go and check them out. You'll get, you'll be able to see plenty of videos and whatnot where Dave or, or, or Brandon or Trent explain the finer points of audio research. But really the main point today was to, um, to talk to your, the people that already know audio research um, and let them know what's going on. The people that don't know who audio research is, they're going, what tubes, what is what? Go by and check them out. Tubes do some really, really incredible things. And that's the reason that they still, that, that they still exist. Um, there's still a big, big healthy tube market out there. Don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Enormous. You know, and the key with tubes is all you need to, what you need to do is to listen. Because, you know, if why buy something that's going to require maintenance down the road somewhere, you do it because it's compelling. It brings the music a lot closer to you. And you don't understand that fully until you actually hear it. People have certain expectations. And this is not old technology. This is new technology. A tube is simply an amplifying device, just like a transistor is. And we think it's a more linear amplifying device. And you know that's the that's the key. But there's one other thing I'd like to add to this is that you know you, we talk about the Wilsons, the Magicos, Sonuses, whatever, uh, Estelons, any big speaker systems. That's great. Uh, one of the best lessons we ever had years ago was when our engineering department wanted to get a uh, a pair of small speakers in just for the bench, and it was actually a pair of PSB Alphas. And, you know, you're talking $250 speakers. You showed me these, yeah. That's right. Well, you know, when they came in, we were all like, okay, let's see what they sound like, you know, rather than just handing them over to the engineers. And we stuck them on a pair of uh, a pair of stands in our big sound room, and we were floored. And, and you know, not they are great speakers. And there are, you know, the point is that you don't have to have Wilson's or Magicos, or Sonuses, or any of the big speaker systems, BMWs, Vandersteins, to really understand what our stuff does. In an audio system, if you lose the information at the source, you can't get it back anywhere else. That's why you want people to, to be uh, using Cobuzz because they're, they're starting with a really high resolution source. You want the DAC to be really great. You want the preamp to be really great. You want the amp to be really great. But start at the beginning, start with you guys. You know, and the key is that, you know, people think, well, I have to have some really expensive pair of speakers to be able to appreciate this. You can appreciate the difference with a $250 pair of speakers. It's well designed. It's amazing. I've read the warranty cards for years, and we've had people buy them with Sir Wynn Vegas and Bose and things like that. And But they got it. They understood that everything is just going to keep getting better as they upgrade. But you can have the world's greatest pair of speakers, but if they're not fed a really good signal, they're going to sound okay. That's then that's the whole point. It has to be, and that's really what a dealer can also do for you. He can put all that together and say, "Let's work on this. Let's work on that." You have to have an approach. 
you know, have to be able to build that system. Most of us, and I still can't, couldn't afford to go out and buy a complete big system. Right. You upgrade, and that's the best part. Yeah. You, you get a better deck, you get a better preamp, you get better cabling. Unfortunately, that makes a difference. And uh, the dealer can help you do that. So uh, we have great components, in it, but it's a means to an end. And, you know, we all got into this because we love music. Believe me, we did not get into this to be rich. <laughs> that is so true we do this because we love it and that's that's the whole point so uh that's why you know, I've, I've said so many times i swear the reason that i got into the audio industry to begin with was the stupidest reason that you could possibly imagine so i was waiting for my band to get signed right because i was going to be a rock and roll star <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was going to happen at the end of the summer. So I thought before this happens, I'm going to go work for a hi-fi company so that I can get a good deal on a, on a, on a stereo system. Yep. And, you know, like many decades later, I never left. This is a very fun business. I love it. I've met so many great friends and had such a great time. It probably couldn't, couldn't uh, uh, hold up to being a being a rock star, but you know what? This is a super lot of fun. I've met so many wonderful people, in, including you three people that have become just really near and dear to my heart. I couldn't imagine being in a different industry uh, for the first five years. I'm going. Are you kidding me? You're actually paying me to do this I, it's like i would do this for free i get to turn people into music i get them to listen to different amps and speakers and it, it was just so much fun and i gotta tell you something it still is right for any sure. of you guys ready to like throw in the towel and start going you know selling cars or real estate or whatnot we're just getting started <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and and again, I've been posed with that question, you know, did you buy this to turn it, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I think, you know, we three as a group, you know, we want to retire from this company and we want every associate, not employee, but associate to retire from this company. You know, I mean, there, I'm just going to plug this, you know, this 50th anniversary book, right? Oh, that's cool. So we want to be in business for another 50 years, right? I mean, that's the goal of this company. It's not, we're not a venture capitalist company. We're just human beings that want to make it right. That's the key to why all of this happened. And again, my three cohorts here, if they weren't on board, I wouldn't be here today and we would be on your beautiful Coba sh show, um, producing the the very best front end. You know we have to have garbage. You know garbage in, garbage out. You guys give us the means to play awesome music. Thanks very much. I cannot wait until the shows and whatnot start back in, start back up again. I was doing for uh, I don't know maybe well really since Coba started in the United States, um, I would be invited in by certain manufacturers to do. Um, like a, a 30, 45 minute um, flash DJ uh, with Cobuzz. And we just had some of the best times doing that. Um, I actually even did it with uh, ARC at, at, at one point, but I can't wait to do it with you guys. I, I'm looking forward to the shows coming back. I don't know about you guys. So are we. So yeah. what's the first one? What's it looking like the first one is? Well, actually, yeah. one next week in Taiwan. Well, yeah. Okay, but the U.S., I don't know. They just announced today that Expone is going to be next August. I saw that. So I saw that. We'll see. We don't know what's, what else can happen. will happen. You know, um, we uh, need I'm critical looking forward mass to it. people out. And, say uh, again, Dave. I'm sorry. Critical mass to, for people to come out. And, I, and they need to come in and not be, a, not be nervous about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We hope you're all staying very safe and uh you know, wearing your masks. And when you go into a dealer, if you do visit them, be sure to be respectful of them and, and wear your mask. Thank goodness. We don't have to, wear, we, we don't have to cover our ears. <laughs> <No. Yeah. laughs> oh man, guys, this has been, this has been a lot of fun. I want to remind you to, um, to uh, check back with Cobuzz uh, probably within the next two or three days. And you'll be able to see uh, uh, the, the audio research, uh, 
Cobus playlist. It'll actually have a big audio research logo on it. And these things really help define the company's personality. I am super looking forward to this one because I believe if I'm not mistaken, Brandon, you're the one putting this together. Well, so it was a collaboration actually. Warren, myself and Dave all contributed to to, to the list. Um, and to go a little deeper, I did the classical, Dave did the jazz and Warren did the pop. So, and I did. Well, you didn't, You and, and we're waiting for Trent's input yet. There you go. <laughs> you know, bring a little country and a little blues and a little folk. Right. Hey, little man, this sounds like this is going to be a good playlist. Yeah. So yeah, everybody I, join I, in. I, if you don't happen to have a membership to CoBuzz, you can actually listen to it for free for 30 days. So um, if you're if you're of that L, you could like pop in, do a little 30 day thing, listen to what uh, what Trent, Brandon, and Dave have put together. I'm super looking forward to this playlist. Awesome. It's fun. It's we're not we were purposely not picking the audiophile favorites that's one of the things in fact thank that, goodness like, please please no more things we we hear it every show so these are very individualized uh selections and uh they may be great sounding they may not but musically they're good and that's yeah you know what that i appreciate playlists like that more yeah. uh every day it used to be when you would go to a show, you would hear these same 20 cuts in every room. It used to drive me up a wall. Um, now it's, it's really even the last few shows that, that we attended, you would find people that were much more eclectic than they had previously shown. Um, so I, we've got some playlists up there for manufacturers. If you go to CoBuzz and then playlists and then hit high five partners, you'll see a list of uh, music that will totally blow you away. And then there's a few on there that have still got those same 20 songs. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I appreciate the, uh, the, the, you know, taking it uh taking it out of that context a bit because really that is so true david it's it's not just about everything being produced to the nth degree which so much is these days but it's a it really is about the music so it, yeah it's about diversity right i mean you know what i like and brandon likes and dave likes i mean they can be you know together but they're also a very different playlist so we want to have fun music is fun Right? Mostly, yeah. <laughs> Unless you're in my listening room, <laughs> then it can be a little academic. <laughs> well, <laughs> you understand my point, though. It should be fun to eat each taste. Right. No, you're right. You're 100% right. Okay, sure. so here's what I want to do. I want to I want to get just a Brandon classical playlist. I think that would be quite interesting and educational. Okay. I probably know the stuff that Trent and Dave listen to. I probably don't know the stuff that Brandon listens to. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, certainly there's plenty, there's plenty of it that you do know. I mean, we can go to the Beethoven's Brahms and Bach's, right? But yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there. I can throw, I can throw you a few curveballs. <laughs> cool. Eclectic classical. I think that's what we should call this play. Brandon's eclectic pl classical <laughs> playlist. That would be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to this video. As soon as you guys get this, uh, I want to make sure that we get it up on the CoBuzz social and also streaming Music Matters. Um, if you don't know, on Facebook, there's a, there's a page called Streaming Music Matters, and it is a CoBuzz fan page. We put lots and lots of music up there. I try to have interesting articles and actually interact with as many people as I possibly can. There aren't too many posts that get up there that I don't interact with. So if you're a big music fan and you just want to know a lot more about music or interact with people that may have different tastes than you, please uh, please join us. It's a it's a really great group, and we have a lot of very smart people on there, including these these three so that's um, a great page dave it really is there's a lot of information people are right there so it's uh it's a nice run page well thanks well listen um not that we have got to stop we have reached a little past our hour what, what do you guys want to bring up that we just didn't happen to that we just didn't happen to cover today <sighs> that's oh. a question isn't it <laughs> in question um you know, I, I can't really deliver new products or timeframes on new products, but 
I should simply say to you that we're going to go back to some of the roots and the DNA of audio research. Um, because, you know, look, frankly, we build some of the most expensive, when well, I shouldn't say most expensive, the most high performance audio gear in the world. I have three kids in college. I can't go out and buy, you know, a preamplifier and a phono stage and our reference amplifiers. I just simply can't. Um, if I did, my wife would put me in the doghouse, maybe forever. <laughs> so I personally understand that. And so our goal as the manufacturer is, you know, to continue that reference product because it is a reference product and it deserves its place, um, you know, on the stand. You know, you can look to all, to my left, which you can't see, um, but all of these awards. Um, product turn your, turn your computer. You, it's probably not as bright as it was. Yeah, look at that. I mean, <laughs> you're talking about, you know, the best of the best out there. Sorry for my lack of uh, computer tilting knowledge. No problem. <laughs> but we also understand that, you know, the DNA of the company is really getting back to the point where everyone either can afford and or, and or should be able to afford audio research at any price point within cool. reason. Uh, that sounds like most price points. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain point as an American manufacturer, you just can't, you just can't build products in the U.S. You know, uh, below a certain price. But but to what Trent is saying, I mean, that's, you know, we we understand where our product line sits today. You know, and look, when I joined the company ten years ago, we had things, you know, that were even sub five thousand dollars. Right, we had products in that category and. And so, you know, we're just looking at manufacturing efficiencies, ideas, um, like Trent said, getting back to our DNA. We can't let out too many secrets out of the bag yet, but, but you know, we've had a lot of conversations about how do we get back to that point? How do we create, you know, like I say, audio research, it's more in reach for a lot more people. Um, of course, there's the used market, but, you know, there there's all, always that faction that wants to go buy something new. So... You know, and, and 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 since we haven't been in that sub ten thousand dollar field for a while, um, there's other other manufacturers that have kind of come in there, right? And and you know, you know, that's a really interesting point, uh, Brandon. Um, I, you guys may, I'm glad I'm not like within striking distance when I say this, but I would encourage if you've never, uh, if you've never. Uh, had audio research in your system or you look at the price tag of the new stuff and you go, oh my gosh, you know, I just can't quite do that. Go buy something used. Here's the here's what's going to happen. You're going to buy a, a, a reference pre that's five years old. That guy's just going to turn around and buy the new the new reference preamp. I mean, that's one thing about a company like audio research. The the uh, your customers are super, super loyal. They don't want to just sell it to get something else. They want to sell it to get something higher in the line That's with audio research. I've got several friends right around my neighborhood, Lee Scoggins being one of them, yep. who started out with some uh, some of the the um, the lesser expensive audio research. And at this point, this guy's got like reference stuff. He just kept trading up and kept trading up. So I would say. You know, if if you look at this price tag and you're going, wow, that's just too much for me, get a used SP3 or 5 or whatever and, like, hang on to it for a few years. Because when you get ready to sell that, you'll sell that. Somebody in your position right now will do the exact same thing, and then you can start stepping up through the line. This really is kind of a family thing. Once you get hooked, you may not want to. Because <laughs> once you get hooked on this stuff, it's it's going to be really hard to start buying another brand. No, yeah. let, let, let me just say that we know we can we try to fix everything we've ever made. We can't do it, uh, but we can still fix you know a forty seven year old SP three. So if somebody calls you up and says, "Dave, I'm about I'm looking for a whatever." Uh, I'm, I'm I'm about to buy a whatever piece of gear this is. Can you can you help me out here? You would be able to say, look, you know, nice piece, but we can't even work on it anymore. Or yeah. wow, no problem because we can retube that baby and have it, you know, up and running like new. Yeah, no, no, we can fix 
uh, at this point, we can fix any tube product I think we've ever made. And, uh, you know, the key is just keeping up with the components that have been, been discontinued. Right. I mean, our designs are all discrete. There are no, there, we don't have op amps and things like that in the signal. And so when they go out of production, we're scrambling around trying to find something different. So if people have questions, you know, the only issue is how expensive that repair will be. Because if you want original parts for that, that you know, you know, 67 Mustang, you know, it's going to be hard to find them. They're going the to point is that that it's not obsolete. There are very few products that are ready for the junk heap just because they're 10 or 15 years old. Um, so I really appreciate that about your company. The other thing that I appreciate about your company is when I call up audio research, I always get somebody. There's like a human being that talks to me and I go, hey, is Dave there? It, it's like that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful service that you guys uh uh, provide that you know some people don't yeah. look we realize these products aren't inexpensive and 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 they're not commodity items you know people buy these in the same sense they buy you know collectors watches or things like that and um you know this is a long-term thing and even if it's not the original owner but the second owner you know these people take great pride and spend a lot of money on our components. And we, we, we appreciate that. We understand it. We appreciate it. And look, you know, all of us, we each have our own hobbies too. And, and we see, you know, we see the same sort of things, right? So that's why there's, you know, to, to what Dave is saying, you know, we, we want to fix everything we've ever built, you know, we'll take it. And our service department, even, you know, you, they get something in that's 40, 45 years old. And, and, you know, there are parts, multiple parts that are obsolete. They're going to do everything they can to go find suitable replacements. You know, our engineering department is is keyed into this as well. If they've got to make engineering changes for something that's in a signal path, you know, that's the, all those resources are here in the building, and and we utilize them to make sure that customers again that they understand and that they feel and they experience that we're here for the long haul. We're here to take care of them, and uh, and and keep them happy. Patrick, Patrick Callery uh, just just had, wrote a nice little comment, spoke to Greg Christensen about a noise issue with the left channel on my LS28, who helped me troubleshoot and identify the problem. Bad tube. Sent the replacement and all is well. Great customer service. I love hearing that. Um, and well, guys, oh, no, Trent, go ahead. No, and and we're look. I mean, for the customers out there, um, you know, due to COVID uh, and some other, you know, factors in the company, you know, we rest assured that we're working on every aspect of the company. You know, like you said, every single time someone calls Audio Research, there should be a human on the other line. Um, the service aspect, we are working as diligently as possible. We have new personnel coming in. So we as a company understand um, the pain, if you will, from a lot of our customers. Rest assured we're working on those as fast as we can. But, you know, we can't just go out and hire some random individual to work on audio research products. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's of course. Very qualified personnel that we have to find to bring into our family. Right. Yeah, and luckily you've got leaders on the on your teams, on your engineering teams, on your listening teams, and that kind of thing. That uh, you know these guys these guys know what they're doing, and they help bring up those people. I'm guessing. Well, and we're fortunate too. There's, I mean, the you know the Minneapolis St. Paul area has great resources for exactly what we do. There are a lot of skilled technicians here. Um, engineering, uh, you know, again, all those departments, um, you know, a lot of, but we, we do have some people that have moved from out of the area, but a lot of our talent is, is local and, you know, and, and that's at the, at the level that we work at and the quality that we expect, you know, this, it's not, this is not a company you could just put anywhere, you know, you, you have to have that resource available. Uh, and so we're fortunate in this area to have that, to be able to still you know, still build. Because again, you know, <laughs> most most places are wave soldering, you know, surface mount technologies and stuff like that. So even just getting somebody that knows how to really solder and populate a board, you know, that's that's a whole skill and a talent all of its own. And it's challenging. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it, that's awesome and, and super interesting. Well, listen, guys, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have you back on in six months. 
just to see where we've gotten. So that brings us to one of my favorite times of the year, spring. Yeah. It'll, bring, it'll, it'll bring us into it'll bring us into spring and hopefully this whole pandemic will be a little uh, you know, a little less and we can kind of get back to whatever normal is going to be at that point. Uh, so what do you say uh, sometime around March, you guys want to schedule another one of these things? I think the um, I think what you've been able to accomplish between now and then is going to be really interesting. I think for a lot of people to see, um, I can't wait. Uh, and I can't wait to come up and see you guys too. Uh, just as soon as we can start traveling again, I'm there. Uh, Trent, thank you for the invitation to, to uh to to hang at your place for a few days and we will as we do always have a fantastic time together brandon you're one of my dearest friends i just love you to death dave i cannot tell you how much respect much love to you brother and uh, we'll be uh seeing you guys then but for now i think we'll we'll uh, sign off and and thank you guys all so much for spending so much time with us in case you don't know out there Trent just bought a company. Brandon just came back to the company. Dave's world has been totally uh, turned around. These guys are so busy. Yet when I called Trent, Brandon, and Dave, and I said, would you guys do this with us? Because I know that there's going to be a lot of interested interested people uh, to see what's going to happen with that, with ARC. Would you guys join us? And, and, you know, Trent said immediately, look, I don't have time to do this. Do you have any idea how much stuff I'm doing right now, David? I'm going, yeah, I do. I, I really do. He goes, but I'll be glad to do it. I, I would love to, you know, talk to you guys and talk to uh, the Cobuzz fan base as well as our own, just to kind of tell them what's going on. So this is a little more special than a lot of the uh, live streams that I do and that it, with most live streams that I do, the companies are totally settled. Everybody knows their own place. They know what they're doing. Uh, you know, in the next hour, as opposed to five million things. Um, so, thank you guys so much for your time and, and joining us. Thank you for having us, David. Thank yeah. you, David, uh, for the opportunity. And uh, as always, love you and and love what you're about. So, um, thank you again so much. Thank now, don't don't forget to. I wish I would have put up the. Uh, I didn't even think about putting up the link to the um, live stream that you're doing tomorrow. But if you'll go on, say, Facebook or YouTube and look up Hi-Fi Buys in Atlanta, uh, Trent is going to be doing, I think, an hour and a half with Alan Jones tomorrow. I'm guessing a lot more of that will be product oriented. I don't know, but I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I'll definitely be there. And uh, hey, man, until the next time, guys, I wish you all the best. And thank you so much for being here. Dave, thanks for having us. And thanks for your support. We really, uh, really appreciate it. Thanks, David. Thank Take care and be well. Best wishes, guys. Great. Bye now.